Okay, it's Friday, October 15th, and you know what that means. Podcast day. Yay! Halloween! Slezak for the win! <laughs> TV Insiders Podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us. Once again, I am Dalton Ross, sitting here with Michael Asiello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Slezak. Hey, guys. Oh, the same sound? And Annie Barrett. Hello. <laughs> oh. Oh. Damn, you so see what lame. I did there? Finger That's slip. So lame. Finger slip. We got a lot to talk about this week. We're going to do a little Mad Men finale preview. Uh, bring in Jeff Jensen to talk about that. That'll be exciting. We're going to talk about what returning show each of us thinks is having the best season. We're going to go on the dance floor, talk a little dancing with the stars, but let's start with Survivor. Ladies and gentlemen, the Medallion of Power is dead. Oh, I love the Medallion of Power. You love the Medallion of Power. Yeah. Annie Bear, always the contrarian. I've always wanted Survivor to be about witchcraft, and finally it was. And now? No? It was so lame. It just sounded stupid. You felt embarrassed saying it. And it you felt stupid. embarrassed saying I felt it. Embarrassed you had to type it. it all the time. It was awful. I want to see a fair fight in challenges. I don't want one team having a 20% advantage. Absolutely. If people are being drowned on a wheel, like they should have to be drowned an equal amount. I'm giving the, the producers credit, though. They tried it, they didn't like it, and so then they got rid of it. That's they, a nice thing about the show. Yeah. They're a little, they can react. Survivor is like amazingly well produced. There are moments like when they show them eating the chickens and there are chickens in the background. They just have those <laughs> nice little touches on the show that just make you say, you know, somebody's paying attention. That sounds yeah. horrible. I like when the younger tribe is shown and they show blossoming flowers because they're still youthful. Yeah. I mean, that's just obnoxious, but it's also just great production. The production is great, but you know it's not so great is going back to the chickens. The fact that they kill the chicken instead of the rooster, making no sense at all. You kill the rooster, you still get the eggs. Uh, they kill the chicken. This whole conversation is making Osceola squeamish, <laughs> by the way. I'm not uh, our sexy vegetarian. Oh, sorry that you're a vegetarian. I'm or, sorry that you're Hey, they tortured humans this week, too, though. That <laughs> that challenge reminded me of the, the, oh, Gina, the, the Gina Davis movie, The Long Kiss Goodnight, when she was strapped yes! to a wheel and tortured. Whoa. One of my favorite underrated movies. But I couldn't believe they did that to it's, the contestants. It, it, you literally could have drowned someone. If you held it, yeah. and you saw someone say, hey, get me out, like, back it up. <laughs> yeah. Someone could have drowned. You know what? Like, bad for them, best episode ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dramatic. It, it, it was, was tense really to watch. funny. How excited, though, were we when it looked like Naonka was going to quit, though? That was sort of ended up being a tease, but I was getting pretty pumped when I thought she it, actually... It would be nice if she would go away. I have to say, though, they focus so much on certain contestants that I feel like maybe 50 to 60% of the people on the show, I don't know anything about. I don't know who they are. I feel like Jane Lynch should come in from Glee and be like, purple, you know, yeah. redhead, guy with stubble, but other it's like guy with stubble. Their names are so crazy that it would not It would Sash. almost seem like a joke <laughs> if she said <laughs> their real names. Benry? Benry Sash. And, and is his name really Fabio? Uh, no, his name's Judd, and then uh, they just started calling him But I love how now that he's officially Fabio. <laughs> like, uh, Probes calls him Fabio, it says Fabio on screen. Yeah. Dalton with Nanka, I mean, did it shock you that <laughs> they didn't try and vote her off? Does somebody know that she has the immunity idol? Well, because there's people that could suspect, like Alina and stuff, but I mean, and and, and Chase, Chase knows that, that she has it, So actually. do you think maybe he secretly told other people? Uh, I don't know, I just think it's stupid. I think the second anyone says, yeah. I want to go, I, I think of quitting, you get rid of them, because what happens, you keep them two days later, they still want to quit, and then you're down two people. You've got to get rid of him. Even um, Dan voted for Tyrone. Yeah, everybody I did, know, except for did. except for Eve. And Dan looks like he may quit next week. They're all they're, that, that tribe's just a, a complete mess. And you know what? It's segue time. <laughs> that segues us into our uh, TV Insider's Twitter question of the week. We got a sweet tweet here, Annie Barrett, from uh, Mike DeCiso. I hope I'm pronouncing your your handle right, Mike. Um, and he asked, "This is pretty blunt. Is this the worst season of Survivor ever?" Um, look, it's definitely not the, the best. Uh, it's and uh, it's hard to judge about five episodes in. I've always considered Fiji and Thailand to be the worst. And unfortunately, <laughs> what this has in common with Annie Barrett is just laughing my geekiness <laughs> right now. I cannot believe I'm just something is happening in the corner that's just hilarious. Uh, I'm not but, even listening. But look, to you. It is bad is bad unlikable casts. Fiji and Thailand were undone by casts where you couldn't really root for people. And I, I, I worry about this cast as well. I like Brenda, Fabio's hilarious. We have a lot of just unlikable, unworthy people. You guys don't geek out on as much. I mean, what do you think of this season so far? I find it just a little sleepy. Like, you know, Nayanka was kind of the highlight of this week, watching her suffer and be sad and want to go home. But I still felt like that took up, you know, a third of the episode. And some of the challenges have been good. Yeah. They've had some cool stuff going on. But I think you're right, from a cast perspective, maybe they're not focusing on some of the other people because they're just boring and the only ones that they're showing off are... Yeah, kind they're of not awful. building a lot of characters. 
kind of annoying. Let's move to the dance floor hey. live. Live from Hollywood. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, are you enthusiastic, chime lady? <laughs> <sighs> Here's the, my big question: Florence Henderson, Corky on the rumba. Any bear, appropriate or not appropriate? I thought it was appropriate. This is what Dancing with the Stars is all about. People who are famous just making a complete fool of themselves on a sparkly stage. Michael who cares? Cielo, appropriate, why, is not it, appropriate. why is it crazy if she's I think being it's appropriate. sexy? Michael Cezak, appropriate or not appropriate? I'm gonna say what's not appropriate is that Corky plays Florence for complete comic relief. And I don't understand why just because the older woman wants to get her sexy on, mm -hmm. she has to be turned into a total joke. And I know like I've suddenly gone serious on a Dancing with the Stars conversation, <laughs> but I can't stand Corky's choreography. I don't like the way he always gets paired with the older woman yeah. and turns her into a joke. I think Florence is an actual contender for the final three. No, I think no, he should treat no, her accordingly. No, no. She is. Not the final three. No, she could make it. So Brandy, Jennifer Grey, and who else? Yeah, exactly. Florence Henderson. Welcome to the I final three. I don't think so. I thought she would be, but no, I think... Her, no, I think agree with you about Corky. I always have felt that way about him, but she's with him, so... If she was paired with Max, If she was paired Audrina's with anyone one. else who could... If she was paired with Max. ...do the right thing with her. Who dipped her hard in the back room. Yeah. Like, sounds dirty. You gotta dip her hard. Dig deep. Okay. That came out really badly. Yeah. Also, is it okay to sexually harass Tom Bergeron in like a group setting? I just think the cupping of Tom Bergeron's ass on Dancing with the Stars needs to be a lot more exclusive starting next week. Talk about fake controversies. Well. What about the dancing in the round, Annie Barry? First time ever, dancing in the round. Oh, I did not like this. <laughs> I did not like that at no, all? no, 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 no. It's too soon and it was a tiny stage. Rick Fox was like if like his wingspan was a little bigger than the stage. You know what I'm not I'm not liking too much? The excessive douche shots in the audience. I know. We had a lot she of gave the best bitch face to Carrie Ann though. <laughs> she did. It was pretty great. She was in It enraged. was a hidden gem of the week. It was a hidden yeah, gem of the week, all right. Yes, yes. Okay. Send in those hidden gems to EW Annie Barrett yes, on mind Twitter. The gems. How mind, is Jennifer Grey not going to win this thing? She's going to win. Say that? She's going to win. I mean, she's a sentimental. I feel like everybody has already made their decision. The judges, she'll clearly win. The sentimental favorite, dirty dancing, the whole thing. She's going to win. There's no suspense. Yeah, probably. people don't like ringers, though. They get annoyed. I feel like Jennifer Grey is getting a, the brunt of that on the message boards. Like, oh, she's, you know, she's a ringer. But I mean, those gams. She has great gams. <laughs> oh I can't believe she's 50 years she old. She looks amazing. Yes. Yes. gams? I say Games. Oh my god. 40 all of a sudden? <laughs> well, it is Jesse with the stars. All right, uh, let's move on to some scripted fare and let's bring in Jeff Doc Jensen to uh, give us a little Mad Men finale preview. Jeff, Mad Men finale on Sunday. The big question is will this letter slash ad that Don wrote for the New York Times condemning tobacco, will that save the company? I don't know if the letter is going to save the company. And after last week's episode, I kind of don't know if Mad Men is terribly interested in resolving the question of the future health of the agency this season with everyone sort of ponying in some money to sort of shore up the agency for this next six months. It seemed that the show was sort of setting up this idea for itself that it doesn't have to resolve the future of the agency question this season. I, I kind of wonder if they're going to leave that thought kind of dangling for the long off season to come and maybe focus at season finale more on the character beats, such as the final fate of Don Draper this season. We've seen him sort of totally unravel and try to rebuild himself and now kind of falter again. Where are we gonna leave the man Don Draper, not necessarily the ad man Don Draper? I'm obsessed with Sally. I'm really afraid that she's gonna commit suicide in this finale. If that happens, I'm Jesus. never watching the show again. <laughs> I'll see Ella take us to a really dark place. Now. I just have wow. this, all season, I felt like that's where this is leading, that she's gonna take her own life. And that's going to be devastating. Are well, you serious? Yeah. Right well, now? I mean, it was kind yes, of sad last week to see her get cut off from her her only one true friend in the world. Who freaks me out? That kid freaks me out. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, not, not as much as him. her mother freaks me Wait, out. Wait, maybe he'll like help her or or kill her. Well, what was she holding in her <laughs> hand at the end of the episode, Jeff? She was uh, holding that bracelet kind of thing. I think the word is Scooby Doo. That's a French term or something like that. But it's like this bracelet that creepy Glenn had left behind for her on her bed after he invaded her home and trashed it in like the second episode of the season. I'm you, that's, the, that's what's going to happen. I think Alciela might be onto something uh, here. Me too. I, 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 Jeff, do you think January Jones is pissed about how much screen time she got this season? I have to think so. I mean, it's been pretty remarkable how much she's been 
dialed down. I know that that development pleases some Mad Men fans because, um, you know, Betty is not everyone's favorite character. But I got to think that it's setting up this idea that maybe we'll see more of her next season. I've always kind of felt that there, there needs to be more resolution. They need to return to the Don and Betty relationship somehow, you know. I, well, I'm I think of... Sally's suicide will facilitate that. that that's a really interesting uh, wow. point. Wow. I know. I think that it, it might, there might be some sort of weird attempt or Glenn might do something weird. I, I think that something's, might. I mean, I don't want her to die. Something's not going to happen. But well, it's, it's, it's too cute. If you draw the parallel to The Sopranos, Jeff, you know, The Sopranos, when they were apart, they were still together a lot on the show, even though they were separated. But yeah, you haven't seen a lot of Don and Betty, and that relationship just is, isn't even really a plot point. And every time we see Henry on screen, it's just, ugh. While we're scripting the finale, one other thing that a few people here have sort of theorized about, did Joan actually have the abortion? Uh, we saw her in the waiting room, we saw her sort of thinking, we were led to believe that she did, but what do you think, Jeff? Is there a chance that she's going to have this baby? I want to say that she kept the baby. I want to say that she had a change of heart when she got to the clinic, I think that for two reasons. It's been set up this idea that if she got another abortion, she basically would not be able to have any more children, period. And I think that's an option that she wants for herself. Another idea that's been suggested by someone else is that I think that maybe she had sort of an epiphany in that moment that she needs a life change. She needs just to do something. She needs to break out of the rut of her own behavior and maybe she just got this idea that like you know what could be more radically changing than just keeping the baby and having the baby she wants it just for the sake of a, of, of a marked change in her life all right let's talk about the new fall season in general in terms of new shows really super disappointing nothing's really broken out there's a few shows we kind of like and but nothing has really captured the imagination so let's turn our attention to some returning shows that are having really, really good seasons. We're each going to pick one for the returning show we think is having uh, the best season. I'll go first. I am totally loving The Good Wife this season. I loved it last year, but I love what they've done this year with taking Carrie and making him this total revenge-seeking attorney in the DA's office. What do you think, Osceola? I agree. I'm loving The Good Wife. I'm fascinated with what's going on between Kalinda and Scott Porter. Mm. I have no idea what he has on her. But I, it, I find it incredibly suspenseful, and I love what it's doing to her. It's like totally throwing her off her game. Yeah, it's a total She's game, out. total game of cat and mouse with yes. those two. It's a really uh, a lot of fun to watch. Mike, what's your pick for the show that's having a great season? If I were to pick which show I think is having the best season returning, I would say Fringe, Community, and probably The Good Wife. But you know, I'm going to talk about Parenthood because I, I do love the show, and I think it is having a really strong second season. More than anything, when I watch that show, I'm so relieved. It's not about detectives, cops, spies, which I feel like the, the landscape of TV is just so littered with that right now. It's like, I feel like it's almost like a miracle to sit down and watch a family drama. Jason Kadams, who did Friday Night Lights, just has... He handles family situations so well. It feels so real. You know, it feels natural. I, I really feel like this is a family. I actually got a little weepy this week when Peter Krause went to the uh, the meeting and said, I can't tell my son that he has Asperger's and having to lie to his son and how hard that was. I actually got a little weepy. And you don't have feelings. I, I have there's a, there's a heart of, of stone in here. It was uh, very surprising. Annie, yeah. what's your pick? I think Cougar Town is having a great season. Yes. They, I mean, it was already good. Everything is such a farce. They examine sex and dating and relationships, friendships, you know, drinking. They've totally abandoned the idea that anyone works for a living. Right. All they do is hang out drink in the morning in the sometimes. morning yeah. like huge glasses of wine it's just nice it's very comforting you yeah, want to you, you want, want be these part people of to that. be yes you want desperately to have friends period exactly i want these friends i want someone to have a glass of wine with they're absurdly over the top yeah. and yet completely relatable yes. and once in a while I get choked up watching the show like when totally. Travis went off to college and Jules wanted to have that look from him as he drove yes. away it was just like oh Great. my god are and you and then this week Busy yep. Phillips had a huge episode Lori's character I think <gasps> became a lot more realized she's amazing she is amazing Busy Phillips is amazing on she that. is um, it's interesting she's the way that show has become much more of an ensemble comedy it was built yeah. as this Courtney Cox vehicle and now it's sort of just become an ensemble show, really. Yeah. All right, Mike Slezak, what is your pick for Best Returning Show? You know, I'm glad Annie said Cougar Town so I can go with an underappreciated gem on CBS Gems. called Medium. <laughs> no, no, no <laughs> before, before you boo hiss, the first season on CBS last year was a little bit of a rough season. It felt kind of safe, predictable, not as scary as it used to be. This season, they are back in good form. 
the murders are creepy. It's hard to predict who the killer is. I feel like a lot of the procedural shows that I used to watch, Law & Order SVU, regular Law & Order, the CSIs, have all gotten completely ridiculously off the rails. The writing on SVU, for example, is just like out of control awful. But for a crime show that has decent characters, writing that doesn't make you cringe, there's actual scares to it. Like I get scared watching Medium Love it. Okay, two comments. First of all, props to all of us for not bursting out laughing while you're talking about media. A lot of like restraint. Like, I appreciate okay. that. Uh, secondly, all of us are just going to take your word for it. Yeah. Which is great. It's like we can't refute what you're saying because... I believe what you're saying. I mean, I no, I, I, a, think, a, I think at the heart, like, you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Do you watch the show live on Fridays? Because that would be sad. I perhaps sometimes do watch it on a Friday. Sometimes I watch it on a Saturday morning with my breakfast. Nothing meat. wrong with watching TV on a Friday. All right, let's go to uh, Jeff Jensen and see what the doc is prescribing. Hey, <laughs> to watch. what's up? My second community, one of the best ensembles and line for line, maybe the funniest show on television, in my opinion. Agreed. But the show that has totally galvanized me this season is Fringe. This has been a show that I've, I've liked for its first two seasons, but I just kind of felt it hasn't quite lived up to its hype, lived up to its potential. But this season, with this whole idea of a war between parallel worlds, I just feel like the show is a lot more fun. It's really kind of found uh, its original voice. I've been really enjoying it. You know, I was looking for that show after Lost to kind of fill that sort of, you know, geek serialized, you know, sci-fi fantasy void. And I hope that the event was going to be that show, but Fringe has actually stepped up to become that show. Jeff, I gotta ask, like, I'm, I'm somebody who started watching Fringe and I sort of lost interest uh, toward the end of the first season and just kind of gave up. It got backlogged on my DVR. Is it worth jumping back in? Has it gotten that good? And, and is it possible to jump back in? Because I feel like that's a big problem with a show like Fringe. You just feel like, I'm gonna jump in blind. Is it worth it? Yeah. Look, it, it has gotten that good. I mean, I think it is very well written, very well acted. I think Anna Torv, who you know a lot of people really were uncertain about in the first season, has really stepped up to own that show. I mean, she's just really great. And I, don't, I think there are fewer actors working harder on television right now than her. The show is set one episode in one world and then in another episode in another world. And she anchors both of them playing different variations of her characters, and she's great. But the point that you bring up, is it accessible? Can we get back into it if you haven't watched it for the past two seasons? You know, honestly, I have to say no. It's very much a show that is written for the people that have been with the show for two years. I think that you, you can try to get up to speed. It's not so daunting, but you know, I think that's a real, real issue for this show. I disagree, actually. I was a spotty fringe viewer the first two seasons. It wasn't really doing it for me. It was like, I liked the idea of it. The, the mythology didn't really interest me. The individual cases did. But this season was the first time like I'm watching every single episode. And I, I feel like it's almost like a new show. But so if I downloaded the first episodes from this season only, you could jump in. I think you can. But is it too little too late? Is the show, you know, has been struggling. They moved it to Thursday nights before last year and really viewership fell off. And you have to, you have to be concerned uh, about the long-term future of the show, even if the quality is at a very high point. If they would just commit to saying, we're gonna give it the entire season, because I feel like we're in an age where, you know, and I see this with our readers on, on our message boards and our comment sections, they know what's dropped off by 2 million viewers yeah. to the second episode or dropped off by 20%. And we've all been burned so many times yeah. investing in a show. You can't watch everything, it's impossible. Fox is not going to pull Fringe off the air. It's gonna at least be on yeah. the air through this season. Through There's the no season. doubt about it, whether it'll be on beyond this season, I, I don't know. All right, well, uh, another exciting addition, J a high octane, <laughs> action packed. Thanks a lot everyone for joining us. We'll be back next week, talk about a bunch of shows, including a Project Runway finale preview. So check back October 22nd for that. Until, have a fantastic week. Say bye-bye. Bye. 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 Welcome to the runway.